Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the Reptile Barn. I am doing an episode of What We Wish Customers Knew. This is the second episode. Uh, the first one was on uh, reptiles fasting. A little bit of talking about that. Today we're going to talk about reptiles biting. So, uh... I thought about this because I've had some times where we sell a snake or somebody a couple times we've even had people who just talk to us who didn't buy their snake from us but the snake is striking at them and they're very concerned they think the snake must be sick they think the snake must hate them or uh, that the snake was abused by the breeder before it got to them or something like that that is generally not the case right <laughs> I can virtually break snake bites down into two groups um, and I'm not this is this doesn't come from me this is kind of widely accepted by um, snake enthusiasts around the world right snakes bite when they uh, have a very strong feed response and they're hopeful that um, you're about to introduce food into them into their cage or whatever and snakes bite when they are defensive right when they're afraid so two bites feed response or defensive bites Typically, I prefer the defensive strike, to be honest, because they're just going to kind of bite and back off. Sometimes they don't even open their mouth. <laughs> they're just striking. Um, either way, they're not really going to latch onto you and, and do any damage. A food response bite can hurt more because, you know, they're trying to uh, either constrict or envenomate or, or bludgeon to death their prey, which is why I've got Ursula out. Okay, this is our female eastern indigo who is looking absolutely beautiful, by the way. Um, these guys don't really bite defensively. They just don't, even as babies, they're not really biters. That's a pretty confident species, right? But they definitely go after their food. They have an enormous feed response. There's been several times where I, I open up their cage and I reach in there and they just open their mouths and fling themselves at me, right? They are ready to eat. Uh, I've not been gotten, thankfully, because that would hurt. They have a pretty strong bite I've heard but uh, that's just a, a food response bite you have to be careful of that you know um, maybe uh, use a paper towel roll to kind of defend yourself a little bit they quickly realize there's no food and they calm right down so for a feed response bite usually that's all it takes now something like an Amazon tree boa uh, you might have a little more difficulty because they are just more prone to strike in the first place, but they also have heat pits, right? And uh, they are programmed to just, if they feel with their heat pits something warm flying by, they just, without thinking, lunge at it, trying to grab it with their big old teeth, right? Uh, so that's something you also have to be aware of. If you keep a lot of Amazon tree boas, you get bit. That's just, that is how the world works. These guys, though, if you're careful, if you show them at the very beginning of a handling session that there's no food to be had, they will be just as sweet and calm and wonderful as this beautiful girl right here. Right? Um, so, that's all I'm going to say about feed response. It's, it's not a terrible uh, problem with most of the species that we keep, right? Lizard or snake. So, I'm going to put her back and pull out some snakes to talk about defensiveness. All right, I pulled out Big Dan. This is our male Dominican Red Mountain Boa, okay? Hopefully, very soon, per a request, we're gonna be doing an entire video about the care of these guys, by the way, but for today's purposes, for this episode, um, we're talking about bites. Many of you, just looking at this snake, immediately understand why he might feel defensive right now. Now, he doesn't personally, but he is deep in shed, right? You can see from it, the tone of his skin, certainly looking at his eyes, this snake is deep, deep in shed. He is virtually blind right now. Any animal that is used to seeing and seeing very well, who suddenly goes blind, is going to be defensive. A human is going to be defensive, right? And we understand more of what's going on. So um, a defensive or fearful snake may respond by biting. I think most of them really prefer to respond by fleeing, but when they're in their cage, you know, that we keep them in, that's not usually an option. He's trying to climb on me here. Hold on. Oh, 
he squeezes so hard. Sorry, guys. Just got squeezed there for a minute. But, uh, yeah. So, there's lots of reasons a snake might be afraid. The most common one by far is that it's a baby, <laughs> right? I would guess that 95% of the snakes that are sold and purchased out there are babies. We want to get a snake as a baby. We like that, right? And then raise it up ourselves. However, baby snakes are fearful. Um, sometimes the first time you go to approach a snake on any given day uh, might be a little bit fearful. They kind of have that, that instinct to just, if something large approaches them, they are going to be afraid of it, right? Um, we call that cage defensiveness, I think, most of the time, as if they were territorial. I don't really think there's too many snakes that are territorial, but just being approached for the first time and picked up is terrifying for a tiny animal. Um, most of them get used to it, but it takes a while. Um, and then once you have them up and they're not being harmed, right? You're not trying to eat them. They realize, oh, this is okay. This person's not going to eat me. You want your snake to be thinking, right? If you want it to, you know, you first approach your snake and its brain is like code red. I'm being attacked. I must flee or musk or bite, right? But, uh, soon as they realize, oh, well, I'm, I'm actually fine. They're not hurting me. They're not doing anything. There's no threat here. Then their brain starts to calm down, right? And they start thinking again and then they stop biting. Um, much of the time, that's all it takes is just pick them up, right? In fact, most of the time, that's all it takes. Just pick up the snake, be confident, reach in there and grab it. And once it's up, it will realize, oh, I'm okay. Um, other reasons a snake might be defensive. If the snake is injured or sick, it might be defensive and want to bite. Um, if the snake is uh, not used to really loud noises, um, more like vibrations for a snake, but with lizards, the noises too. And all of a sudden there's been a, you know, a bunch of loud noise for a while. The snake might get defensive. It's afraid, right? Snakes are not aggressive. They just aren't. He's twisting himself all over the place here. Um, there might be snakes who out of fear are going to try and run you off. I'm thinking of like venomous snakes, like a black mamba or something, right? Where they kind of will charge right at you. But even then, if the snake weren't afraid at all of you, it wouldn't be doing that. It really, really is a fear response. Um, people love to say this, or a cotton mouth is just a mean snake. You know, no, it's not. It's just afraid, right? Some snakes are more fearful than others. Some snakes are more prone to go to a strike when they, when they are afraid than another species might be. But overall, snakes are just not aggressive animals, right? They, uh, tend to be lower on the food chain and they just want to not get eaten. So, um, when it comes to a fearful snake... There is really one thing above all that you must do if you want the snake to become less fearful and therefore bite you less or hopefully not at all. You must handle your snake. That's, that's it. 10, 15 minutes a day, every day, assuming the snake is healthy and eating properly, um, is generally all it takes. After a couple weeks, almost any snake is going to calm down if you, if you treat it that way, right? There are, again, some of the arboreals, almost all of the venomous snakes, this does not apply to, but most snakes that are kept in the hobby, certainly the, the most common ones, you know, corn snakes, king snakes, ball pythons, um, boas, hognose, all these kinds of snakes that you see a lot, this applies to all of those. Hold them a lot, they will learn to trust you. You must have positive interactions with these animals so that they can learn over a period of time that any time you pick them up, nothing bad is going to happen to them and they will calm right down, right? So, again, like I said, I originally thought of this topic because of people approaching me thinking that something was wrong with their snake or that the breeder had mistreated their snake. Not that they were accusing me, but just, you know, concerned with that. Don't worry, especially if it's a baby snake. It is normal, and with most of these same snakes that I just named, especially as a baby, the bite is not something to be um, considered a danger, right? You're not going to get harmed when your baby ball python bites you. You might get scared of the strike. I certainly still, you know, jump, but uh, it's not a big deal. 
you see videos of people getting bit on the internet and you think, holy cow, how do they do that? It's because it doesn't hurt that bad. <laughs> you know, if you see people taking retic bites and they're laughing about it, well, I'm going to wonder what's wrong with that guy. But most of these little snakes that bite, it doesn't hurt very bad, you know? So uh, go ahead and handle your snake. If you must, put on leather gloves so that you can confidently pick up your snake without being afraid of the bite. Um, that's that's totally fine. If that's what it takes to, to be able to, you know, be brave enough to reach in and pick it up, even though it's a striky snake, then do that. That's fine. There's no problem with that. I've told lots of families with little kids before to do that if they're afraid that uh, their kid's going to get bitten. Anyways, that is today's topic. Um, I hope that those of you out there who are considering buying a snake, but you're worried so deeply about the biting that this could put your mind at ease a little bit. Uh, your snake is not mean. It's almost certainly not sick or injured or something like that if you're buying from a reputable breeder. And uh, the breeder was not abusing the snake. One last note uh, before, I, before I finish here. Uh, a snake that has just been shipped is probably at the most stressed it's ever going to be at. Uh, it's it's afraid of everything at that point. It got stuck in a baggie or in a, uh, you know, the little deli cups and then jostled around for 24 hours in the dark, um, probably subject to at least a little bit of temperature extremes outside of its norm. That, that's going to be a stressed out snake. This guy actually bit my brother the first time we ever pulled him out of the bag after shipping. Uh, he's not a biter, super sweet snake. But he had had enough. My brother pulled him out and he just looked at his hand and was like, ah, and bit on him, right? So, um, even a very nice snake can have a cranky day, especially after shipment. But other than that, that is why snakes bite. That's what you need to know about their, their bites and what you can do to kind of calm them down and help them to uh, socialize and get to know you and trust you and all of that. So, thank you for watching. You've been watching What We Wish Customers Knew with the Reptile Bar. Thank you.